Hey, real quick, before we get into it, just wanted to say that I recorded this video while we were still in 2023. I even recorded it before the Game Awards, so that's why it'll sound like I'm talking about the Game Awards as if it hasn't happened yet. And when I say this year, I'm talking about 2023. So anyways, I just wanted to clarify that real quick. Now let's get into the video. So 2023 is coming to an end. And when a year is wrapping up, some people like to look back and reflect on the year and think about the good, the bad, and everything in between. And I've witnessed a bunch of people doing just that, specifically when it comes to gaming. Uh, now that the year is almost over, there's a ton of people looking back and talking about whether or not this was a good or bad year for gaming. As I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, a lot of people are not happy with modern gaming. And many people feel that the last several years of gaming have been pretty shitty. But what about this year? 2023. Was this a good year for gaming? Is gaming back to what it used to be? I've seen a good amount of people saying that 2023 was a great year for gaming. I've even seen people say this is not just one of the best years for gaming, but the best year for gaming. And I'm going to explain myself throughout this video, but right now I'm going to say this. This was absolutely not a good year for gaming. This was a horrible year for gaming, in my opinion. But I do feel it makes a lot of sense why I feel the way I do. Gaming can be a very subjective thing. When we're talking about what games are good and what games are bad, people are going to have different opinions. There can be games that some people love and other people hate. I understand that. This is not me saying my opinion is the right opinion. Uh, the games that I like are the only good games. The games I don't like are bad games. I'm not saying that. But even when it comes to topics that are subjective, there are things you can do to reduce the subjectivity. Like if we're trying to decide what the best year of gaming was, you can try to be as objective as possible when making that decision. So just keep that in mind. Yes, people can have different opinions, people can like different things, but some people can back their opinions up better than others. Because when you put your personal feelings aside and you take a more objective approach, then you can definitely back up your opinion better than somebody who says they feel the way they do just because that's how they feel. So like I said, I have seen a bunch of people talking about how good of a year 2023 was for gaming. And I just completely disagree with that. I would say this is a bad year for gaming. Uh, modern gaming sucks. Gaming has sucked for the last several years, and this year is just another example of why modern gaming is so bad. Like, th this year wasn't a comeback for gaming. This year did not break the mold of what modern gaming has been. No, this was just another bad year for gaming. And when I say this was a bad year for gaming, I'm saying that based off of what I would consider to be the best years of gaming. And again, this is not just me saying, oh, I think these other years were better just because I enjoyed the games those years more. That's not what's going on here. A big part of why I feel other years were much better for gaming than 2023 has to do with the quality of the games we got, the amount of content, those games offered, the replayability and longevity of those games, the innovation within those games. I'm looking at things like that. I would say it's crazy that people actually think this was a good year for gaming. But then when I think of all the crazy takes I've seen over the years, it's actually not that crazy. I don't know if people just forgot where gaming used to be. I don't know if people just drastically lowered their standards for what a good year of gaming is, or maybe people are just dumb, which that's also not 
very hard to believe. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about what gaming brought us this year. Let's compare it to past years, and I will explain why I believe gaming was much better in previous years. Now, I mainly want to focus on games and the quality of those games. And the reason I say that is because this year there were a bunch of developer layoffs, uh, some gaming studios shut down, games were delayed, and some people might use those things as reasons for why this was not a good year for gaming. But that's not what I'm talking about. And it doesn't seem like that's what people are talking about when they say this was a good year for gaming. When I see people talk about how great of a year they think 2023 was for gaming, it seems like they're mainly focusing on the games that we got. And so let's talk about those games. First off, the nominees for Game of the Year for the Game Awards are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, the remake, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Some other games we got this year that were praised by a lot of people include the Dead Space remake, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Diablo 4, Counter-Strike 2, even though that was basically an update for CSGO, Armored Core 6, Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Starfield, even though some people felt that game was kind of underwhelming, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, uh, we got the Phantom Liberty expansion for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, obviously not everyone loved all of these games. I saw a mixed reception for Diablo 4. Uh, not everyone was thrilled with the changes made to Counter-Strike with Counter-Strike 2. Like I said, some people felt Starfield was pretty underwhelming. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor had some significant performance issues at launch. But regardless of the people who weren't a fan of some of these games, I did see many of these games receive a lot of praise. Now, out of those games that I named, the only one that I played was Counter-Strike 2. Now, some people might immediately think that I am not qualified to give an opinion on this because I didn't play those games. Well, first off, I definitely watched people play some of these games, so I do know what some of these games have to offer. But regardless of that, I'm not here arguing that a bunch of games that I never played are bad games. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that assuming all of those games are good games, this was still a bad year for gaming. So let's say all of those games are good. Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Legend of Zelda. The, the, let's say these are all good games. I still feel this was not a good year for gaming. And that's not me just trying to be negative or trying to find something to hate on or trying to have a hot take or anything like that. No, this is just truly how I feel when I look at what gaming gave us this year and I compare it to previous years. Before I get into what other years gave us when it comes to gaming, I want to point out, and this should be obvious, but it seems like many people just conveniently forgot about this at the very end of the year for some weird reason. Uh, 2023 brought up, it brought a lot of stinkers when it comes to gaming. Um, so yeah, we may have gotten a lot of good games, but there was a lot of bad or underwhelming games as well. Like the PC release of The Last of Us Part 1 had a very buggy launch. Modern Warfare 3, a lot of people felt that the campaign was horrible, many saying it was the worst of the Call of Duty campaigns. And many people feel like that game is just a DLC for Modern Warfare 2022 that was sold for $70 USD. Payday 3 was another game we got this year. The launch of that game was absolutely horrible. Tons of server and performance issues. And the game is lacking content compared to Payday 2. 
And at the time I'm recording this video, according to Steam charts, there are about 7,000 players on Payday 3 between the official game and the beta client. And there are about 30,000 players playing Payday 2. And that alone might just give you an idea of how Payday fans feel about Payday 3. Overwatch 2 came out in 2022, but it came out of early access this year. And many Overwatch fans were not thrilled with Overwatch 2 and felt that it didn't add enough new content coming from Overwatch 1. We also got Lord of the Rings, Golem. Uh, that game had a bunch of technical issues, bad graphics. We also got Redfall this year, and that game launched with a ton of bugs. Many people felt the gameplay was kind of boring. The game was capped at 30 FPS on Xbox at launch. I know I mentioned uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor as a game that came out this year that many people liked, but the game did have significant performance issues at launch. Uh, the Callisto Protocol also came out this year, and that as well had many significant performance issues at launch. I'm also going to mention Starfield as a game that released this year that many people felt was either bad or underwhelming. I know I already mentioned Starfield as a game that released this year that people enjoyed, but there are a significant amount of people who would consider Starfield, again, either a bad game or an underwhelming game. And recently, its uh, recent reviews on Steam has dropped to mostly negative. And the total reviews are sitting at mixed. And after I recorded this video, uh, the disaster that was the day before released. And for those of you who know about that game, you know how awful that whole situation was. But for those of you who don't know, basically the day before was the most wish listed game on Steam at one point. The game came out, wasn't very good, had issues. A lot of people felt that the game did not deliver on things that were promised. Many people calling the game a scam. The game was removed from Steam. Steam is refunding people outside of their normal refund policy. Despite it being the most wishlisted game on Steam, the reviews for the game were overwhelmingly negative after the game launched. Uh, the studio behind the day before shut down. So yeah, many people are in agreement that the day before was a horrible game. So that's just a list of some of the broken, bad, underwhelming games we got in 2023. Uh, many of these games being AAA games. So let's not act like 2023 was all sunshine and rainbows. Now, I'm sure if you looked back on previous years that I and many others would consider great years for gaming, I'm sure you could find some bad releases during those years as well. But how bad were those games? Were they as bad as the bad games of 2023? And how many of those bad releases were actually AAA games? And considering how good some of the games were that we got those years, was it really even that much of a loss that some games released poorly? And the reason I'm throwing those questions out there is to show that there can absolutely be a big difference between the bad games of 2007 and the bad games that released this year. And also, when I look up the worst games of 2007, it's almost entirely games that I've never even heard of. And that's not because I didn't pay attention back then. No, if anything, I paid more attention to gaming back then than I do now. And most of, if not all of the games that people claim are the worst games of 2007 are not AAA games. Out of all the bad, underwhelming, and broken games that released in 2023, Plenty of them are AAA games, or they're games that had a lot of hype and attention surrounding them. Again, games such as Modern Warfare 3, Starfield, uh, The Day Before, the most wishlisted game on Steam, 
Also a game like Counter-Strike, one of the most popular games of all time, and it's usually sitting as the most played game on Steam. And like I mentioned, Counter-Strike 2 did come out this year, and many people were not happy with the changes made to Counter-Strike 2 coming from CSGO. CSGO was a huge game loved by many people, and this year, 2023, was the year that that game received an update that turned it into CS2, and that update disappointed a lot of people. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about how good of a year 2023 was for gaming. Remember what happened to Counter-Strike. And again, I'm not saying that Counter-Strike 2 is bad. A lot of people are absolutely fine with Counter-Strike 2. But the point is that the update for CSGO, which turned the game into CS2, did upset a lot of people for valid reasons. So again, a lot of these bad, underwhelming, disappointing, buggy, broken games that released in 2023 were big games that many people are aware of. These are not just some random indie games that no one's ever heard of. But when I look at lists of the worst games from a year like 2007, it is a bunch of games that I've never heard of or games that weren't AAA games. So again, like I said, there is a massive difference between the bad games of 2023 and the bad games of a year like 2007. Now, I did mention 2007, and that is absolutely a year I would consider a great year for gaming, if not the best year for gaming. But it's not just 2007 that I feel was a better year for gaming than this year. No, there's a lot of years that I feel were way better than 2023. When it comes to gaming, that is. Well, actually, when it comes to a lot of things. A lot of people remember 2007 as being a great year for video games. And that's because it was. A few games that came out that year were Halo 3, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, Portal, uh, The Witcher, Uncharted, Crisis, Team Fortress 2, the Burning Crusade expansion for World of Warcraft dropped that year. So I just named a bunch of games that released in 2007 that a lot of people would consider good games or great games. And like I said before, under the assumption that there were a bunch of good games that released in 2023, I am still saying 2023 was not a good year for gaming. And some people might wonder, well then why do I say 2007 was such a good year for gaming? Like, how can I say 2007 was a good year for gaming because it had a lot of good games and then say, despite 2023 having a lot of good games, it wasn't a good year for gaming. And here's the reason why. First off, in 2007, some of those games were not just good games. Or if they were good games, it was a different kind of good than something like Spider-Man 2 or Alan Wake 2 or the Resident Evil 4 remake or The Legend of Zelda. Like, Halo 3 is an entirely different kind of good than any game that released in 2023. When some people talk about how gaming was good this year, some people specify that single player games were good this year. Well, um, in 2007, Halo 3 had, it had a single player. It had a single player that was good, but that was only a fraction of what that game had to offer. I don't want to take the time to go through all the reasons that Halo 3 is such a great game, uh, even though I shouldn't have to, but it does seem like 
some people have forgotten how great that game actually is. So I'll just say this. Halo 3 was a fun game with tons of variety. It was a innovative game, a polished game, a game with a ton of content. And it was a game that remained fun and kept players entertained for a long time. Playing Halo 3 back in the day was an incredible experience because not only was it a great game, but it was also a game with a ton of replayability and longevity. Halo 3 was not just, hey, this is a good single player game that I'm going to play once or twice or for a week and never touch again. No, 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 no. For some people, Halo 3 was the only game they needed for years. And it's possible some would even say it's the only game they need, period. And even though Halo 3 came out in 2007, that is not the only year that gaming benefited from Halo 3. 2008, 2009, 2010, several years following 2007 were great years for gaming because of Halo 3, which came out in 2007. And keep that in mind when it comes to other games as well. Some games had a lot more staying power than other games. Some games were relevant for several years. There are some games that people would consider good games that they only play for a week and then forget about. And then there's other games that people would consider good that they are playing for several years. And I definitely think that is something you should factor in when we're discussing how good certain games are or how good a particular year was for gaming. And the reason that some games were relevant and enjoyable for a lot longer than other games is because some games were the first of their kind and they were innovative and had a lot of replayability and a lot of content and things like that. And Halo 3 was absolutely one of those games. For many people, Halo 3 wasn't just a one and done game, a, a one week game, one month game, one year game. For many people, they were playing Halo 3 for years and, and playing a lot of it because it was just that good. There are people saying 2023 was a great year for gaming because of games that they only played once or twice or for a week and that was it and i know some of these games that people consider good games that released in 2023 were single player games i get that there's been multiple times where i'll see people say something like oh it's a single player game of course people aren't going to be playing it long term it's a single player game and they think that's some kind of defense like yeah it is a single player game that's my fucking point it is a single player game. So if that single player game is a good game and Halo 3 is a good game, then Halo 3 is an entirely different kind of good than your single player game that doesn't have much replayability and you're only going to play for a day or a week or whatever. Like if we were doing a tier list of good games, Halo 3 would go in the S tier of good games and then there would be a bunch of good single player games that are only single player games that would be in the F tier. That, that's how large the disparity is between something like Halo 3 and many of these good single player games. And don't get me wrong. It's fine if a developer wants to make a single player only game. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with single player games. No, that's fine. Th there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm just pointing out that a good single player game is not on the same level as other good games that had a good single player plus a ton of other modes like Halo 3. Now, I know I talked a lot about Halo 3 and there's something I want to make clear. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. The reason I talk so highly of Halo 3 is not because it's my favorite game. No. The reason Halo 3 is my favorite game is because it's just that good. 
this isn't just a, oh, Halo 3 is the game I enjoy the most, it's my favorite game, therefore I feel it is the greatest game. No, remember what we talked about earlier? Even when things are subjective, you can still put your personal feelings aside and try to be as objective as possible. And when I put my love for Halo 3 aside and I look at that game objectively, I absolutely feel like Halo 3 is a phenomenal game. Like, even if I didn't like Halo 3, I'd still feel it's an incredible game because of everything that that game has to offer. Now, obviously, Halo 3 was not the only good game to release in 2007. There were others that I've already mentioned. And not only did people enjoy these games in 2007, but a lot of these games were new IPs at the time, some of which are still popular today. Like, not only did we get games like Bioshock and Assassin's Creed and Mass Effect and Portal and The Witcher and Uncharted and Crisis in 2007, and not only did people enjoy these games, but these were also new IPs at the time. These were the first games in a series of games. And that's something I think should be factored in as well when we're deciding what the best year of gaming was. Like Assassin's Creed 1 or Mass Effect 1 may not have been the best games in those series, but many people felt like those games were good and they were also new IPs at the time. So you have that new factor as well. Like the next Assassin's Creed game to release could be the best Assassin's Creed game, but Assassin's Creed has existed since 2007, so it's not really new anymore, and many people might be burnt out on the Assassin's Creed formula by now. And that is absolutely not me suggesting that a long-running series should switch up its formula and reinvent itself just to be different. No, I, I think sticking to what works is fine. I'm just pointing out that when you have a series that has gone on for a long time, some people might get bored of it and desire something a little more fresh. Or maybe they're just not as excited to play the eighth game in a series as they were when they played the first one when it was new and refreshing. And a lot of the games that people enjoyed in 2023 are not new IPs. Like Alan Wake 2 is not the first Alan Wake game. Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, the remake, uh, Super Mario, obviously, Legend of Zelda, Dead Space remake, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Diablo 4, Armored Core 6, Counter-Strike 2. So these games are not the first of their kind. They might still be good games, but they're not as fresh as they would be if they were the first of their kind. Like if Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Mario and Resident Evil 4 and Marvel Spider-Man 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 and Alan Wake 2 and all these other games that people enjoyed in 2023, if these were all new IPs, then I do think that would be a lot more impressive than them just being another game within that series. Which again, there's nothing wrong with that, but these are just things to consider when we're talking about the best years of gaming. Now, something I mentioned before was the longevity of certain games and the amount of replayability that they have. And I talked a little bit about how some single player games do not have that longevity where there's tons of people playing it for several years straight. Like usually single player games fall off quicker than good multiplayer games. For many people, they'll play through a single player game once and that'll be it. Maybe they'll come back to it. Maybe they play it twice, but it doesn't even compare to the amount of time that they'll spend playing a multiplayer game, which, like I mentioned earlier, makes sense. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that's odd. It makes sense. But just consider that when we're talking about how good a certain game is and how long a game can remain enjoyable and engaging to a person 
I absolutely think you should factor that in when talking about how good a game is. And Halo 3 was one of those games where people were playing it almost every day for several years straight because it was just that good. But anyways, the other day I took a look at the nominees for Game of the Year for the Game Awards. Then I hopped on Twitch to take a look at how many people were watching these games. Uh, now I know I can already imagine some people saying, oh, who cares about how the viewership is on Twitch? Twitch viewership doesn't mean a game's good or bad. No, but, oh, but stick with me here. Sure, a game can have low viewership, but still be a good game. Fine. But I was looking in the directory on Twitch at all the different games, and out of all of the Game of the Year nominees, the game with the most viewership was Baldur's Gate 3, which was six rows down in the Twitch directory. Again, I know games can be good and not have a lot of viewership. I get that. I do. But if Twitch was around in 2007 and it was as popular as it is today, I just, I just don't think you'd see Halo 3 six rows down. I, I just, probably not in 2008 or 2009 or 2010 or 2011, you know what I mean? Like, I think Halo 3 would be at the top of that fucking directory or pretty close to the top in 2007 and for several years that followed. And I think you could say the same for other games that released in 07. Uh, may, maybe they wouldn't have dominated the top of the directory as much as Halo 3 would have, but I think COD 4 would have been up there until the next COD game came out. And even then, I think COD 4 would still be pretty high up there. Uh, same goes for Assassin's Creed and the Mass Effect and, I mean, obviously World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft came out in 2004, which was also another good year for gaming. But like I mentioned earlier, the Burning Crusade expansion uh, came out for World of Warcraft in 2007, and that was a very beloved expansion for World of Warcraft. Also, Team Fortress 2 came out in 2007, and these are both games that are still very popular today. Like right now, at the time I'm recording this, Team Fortress 2 is within the top 10 uh, most popular games on Steam, and World of Warcraft is currently one of the top games being viewed on Twitch. Like, these are games that were not only popular and praised in 2007, but they stood the test of time. They're still very popular today. And even a game like Call of Duty 4, while obviously there's not a lot of people playing COD 4 today, keep in mind that Call of Duty 4 was basically a blueprint that future Call of Duty games would follow. Like, when many people think about the beginning of Call of Duty, they think Call of Duty 4. Because in a way, Call of Duty 4 is when the franchise reinvented itself. And that Call of Duty 4 formula has been carried forward in future Call of Duty games. And Call of Duty is still very popular today. Halo's not as popular today, but that has less to do with people being disinterested in Halo and a lot more to do with a incompetent studio that has made a ton of mistakes handling the Halo franchise over the years. 2007 was obviously not the only good year for gaming. In 2004, you had Halo 2 release, Half-Life 2, World of Warcraft, GTA San Andreas, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, the first Fable game, the first Far Cry game, so some of those games were fresh because they were new IPs. World at Warcraft is still very popular today. A game like Halo 2 was not only an incredible game, but a very revolutionary game. And that's another thing I think should be factored in when we're talking about great games, which is innovation. And Halo 2 has got to be up there as one of the most innovative games of all time with what it did for online gaming. Now, I could go on and list a bunch of other good games that released other years, uh, but I think I've made my point. I'll show on screen games that released in other years, and I mean, you can see for yourself. 
there's plenty of games here that people would consider good games or great games, but I don't want to dive too deep into all those other games because I feel I've already provided sufficient reasoning for why I feel the way I do. And you know, some people might say, well, hey, maybe 2023 wasn't the greatest year for gaming, but come on, don't you think it was at least a good year for gaming? No, no. Considering just how great of a year 2007 was for gaming, again, not just because it had a lot of good games, but also the fact that a lot of these were new IPs and the, there was a lot of longevity to some of these games and some of them are still very popular today, factoring in all the things we talked about, with 2007 being that great of a year, there's just no way I'd say 2023 was even a good year. I would say 2023 has been a bad year for gaming. And I'm going to say it again, and I know I repeat myself, but the reason I repeat myself is because it seems like some people don't pick up on the things I say, even though I repeat it multiple times. But just because I think 2023 was a bad year for gaming, I'm not saying that these were bad games that released this year. I mean, there were definitely some bad games, but the games of 2023 that people give a lot of praise, they might be good games. I'm not denying that. But like I said, assuming they are good games, I'd still say this was a bad year for gaming because of just how good things used to be for gaming in previous years. Maybe people have forgotten just how good we used to have it, or maybe some people just aren't aware of how good things used to be for gaming. Some people might be lying to themselves, and like I said earlier, some people might just be dumb. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one. I feel that I explained myself thoroughly, although I'm sure there's still going to be people that say, oh, this is just a bad take. What a bad take, even though it's not a bad take and it absolutely makes sense why I feel the way I do. And I'm sure many others feel the same way. And when some people say that 2023 was a good year for gaming, everyone might not be factoring in the same criteria that I did. For some people, a good year of gaming might just be based off of the year that they enjoyed gaming the most. And that's fine. That's fine. If you're just basing it off of uh, your personal enjoyment of video games and because you had a lot of fun playing games that year, you think that was one of the best years. I mean, that's fine. But like I explained, I was trying to put personal feelings aside and be as objective as possible. But there are some people who act like 2023 was unequivocally the greatest or one of the greatest years for gaming. Like, like it's so obvious. Like, how could anyone say that 2023 wasn't a great year for gaming? I mean, you're crazy if you think 2023 wasn't a good year for gaming. Crazy. I, I mean, there's a very good reason to feel that 2023 wasn't a good year for gaming. That reason being what I explained throughout this video. Modern gaming sucks. It has sucked for a while now. And this year is another example of modern gaming sucking. And it seemed like everyone was on board with that a couple months ago when Redfall released and that was buggy and games got delayed and uh, games had performance issues. But then all of a sudden it's like people just forgot about all that. And one last thing that I want to mention is sometimes when I talk about how bad gaming is nowadays, people will reply and say something like, Oh, you just mean AAA gaming is bad, or, oh no, you just mean multiplayer games are bad, single player games are still great, or indie games are still doing very well today. Listen, that might be true, but back in the day, we were getting good multiplayer games, good single player games, good indie games. We were getting good all kinds of games. So if we're only getting good indie games and single player games now and all the multiplayer games suck ass, you know, multiplayer games being the games that a lot of people spend most of their time playing, then it is still fair for me to say that gaming is worse now. 
Like, don't try to correct me and say, oh, no, you just mean AAA gaming. No, I mean gaming as a whole, considering everything. Indie, single player, multiplayer, AAA, all of it. But anyways, we're going to end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>